Hey everyone, welcome back to Mode Bespoke. I'm Atenas. Today's tutorial is for a basket weave hat. Now this hat matches the scarf that we made last week. I had to incorporate another color so it doesn't quite match, but if you use the same yarn that you used for your scarf, you will have a matching hat. So I'm gonna get some materials and let's get started. So I'm using the same yarn that I used last week, and this is a size 4 medium yarn. It's the same colors that I used for the scarf. I'm using a G hook, and that is a 4.75 millimeter hook. And this is a scarf that we made last week, so we're making the same stitch, but our hat is going to be worked in the round. So that way we don't have a seam. So to begin, we're going to start with a slip knot. So wrap the yarn around two fingers, insert your hook into this into the slot between your fingers, grab some yarn and pull that through. Now to tighten your knot, you just pull on the little ends of yarn. So let's, let me zoom in and we're gonna start to chain. So this pattern is worked in multiples of four plus one. So you will end in an odd number and always in multiples of four. So if you don't know how to chain, yarn over and pull that through your loop. I'll do another one. So yarn over and pull through the loop. Your chain needs to be as long as the circumference of your head, plus about an extra inch because this stitch will shrink. So give it at least an extra inch. So I've made a chain and again, circumference of your head. If you need these measurements, there are measurements in the description below. Now we're going to chain two and this is the beginning of row one. So we're gonna chain two and we're going to make a double crochet in the third stitch from the hook. So to make a double crochet, we're going to yarn over and we're going to count to the third stitch. So we're going to insert our hook into the third stitch from the hook, like so. Then you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull your hook back out of the stitch. You're gonna have three loops on your hook. So you will yarn over and pull that through two loops and then yarn over and pull through two loops. So that is a double crochet. In the next stitch, we're gonna make a double crochet. So for those that are experienced, double crochet in every stitch of your chain. For those who need a little more practice, I will keep working a couple more double crochets with you. So don't worry, I'll finish this one and we'll go through another one nice and slowly. All right, so in the next stitch, these are your stitches. You're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over again, pull your hook out of your stitch. You have three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So just keep making a double crochet in every stitch of your chain and I will see you when I'm done making all my double crochets. So here I am at the end of my first row. So you can see I've made a long strip of double crochets. Now, to work it in the round, we have to join the ends. Make sure that none of your sides are twisted, otherwise your beanie's not gonna work out. So make sure it isn't twisted, and then join the two ends together. So here, this is going to be the bottom side. So this is the one that's got that little thread of yarn we left. That's gonna be the bottom side. So put your two ends together, and you're going to insert your hook into the first stitch. So this right here is the chain. You're not gonna use the chain. So this is the post. Here's the chain, and we're going to work into the first stitch. So here, I'll insert my hook here so you can see. We're gonna work in that top stitch, that one right up here. So you're just going to insert your hook and make sure that you go through both sides of the stitch, like that. And we're gonna work a slip stitch in here. So let me just get everything ready to go. Everything nice and tightened. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go to that stitch that I showed you. Insert your hook. You're going to yarn over. And 
and then you're gonna pull your hook out of that stitch. You're gonna have two loops on your hook. See, there's the first one and the second one. Pull the first loop through the second loop, like so. That is a slip stitch. We're gonna use it at the end of every row, so practice it a little bit if you need to. We're gonna also start every row with a chain two. So we're gonna chain one. There we go. I had to move my camera a little so you could see better. So we got one chain and then two chains. And that's how we'll start every row. Now this one we're going to skip. So we're gonna go into the very first post, which is this one, and we're gonna work in pairs. So these two are gonna be worked the same, and then the two next to them, these guys, we're gonna work the same. So everything goes in pairs here. And for those who are not familiar with what a post is, this up here is your stitch. So these little holes, those are the stitch. We're not gonna work in those. We're gonna work in the posts, which are these guys right here. So you're gonna go behind the post, or behind two posts, and you're gonna go behind and in front of the two posts after that, behind the two posts after that, and so forth, and that's going to create a basket weave look. So we're gonna set the foundation for our pattern with this next row, and then for the third row, we're going to, it's gonna be the same pattern we're gonna use over and over. So for this row, we're gonna start with two front post double crochets. Ah, it's a mouthful. So to do that, we're going to yarn over. We're gonna insert our hook behind the post, like so. Then you yarn over, pull your hook out. You're gonna have your three loops like you do with a double crochet. Here, clear this out. Now you're gonna yarn over and pull through two one and two, yarn over and pull through two. And that's a front post double crochet. So we're gonna do the same thing in the next post, which is this guy over here. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook behind the post, yarn over, pull your hook out. You've got three loops and now you just yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two. So we've got our two front post double crochets. Now the next two stitches are going to be back post double crochets. So for those, you yarn over and you're going to insert your hook in front of the post, like so, because you want to push your post backward. So now we've pushed it back, we yarn over and pull out of the stitch and we're gonna finish the stitch like we do a double crochet. So just yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is a back post double crochet. So the next one, we do the same. So we yarn over and we stitch a back post double crochet. So insert your hook in front of the post and push it backward. And now just yarn over, pull your hook out of the stitch. You've got three loops, so you yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. So if you can hear a little tiny one munching in the background, Sorry, my kid is working on worksheets and having a snack, so I'm sorry if you can hear her. All right, we got our next two posts. These are gonna be front post double crochets. So like the first two posts that we did, we're gonna yarn over. We're going to insert our hook behind the post. So go behind the post like so, and pull your post forward. Now you yarn over and remove your hook, and you just close your stitch. The next post is the same. So we make a front post double crochet, so you pull your post forward, and then we just finish our double crochet. The pair right next to that, these two, are going to be back post double crochets. So we come in front of the post, push the post backward, and yarn over, pull through here, and then we just close off, close off our stitch. Keep going until you finish the row. And now that I have finished my row, I've made it all the way around, you still run the risk of twisting your work, so make sure that none of it's twisted because you're gonna have to go back and fix that, and it'll be a whole lot of crocheting. So just be sure that it's not twisted up, and we will join the round. So these two were back post double crochets. I've got this little stitch right here that I haven't finished, and they are, it's gotta be a front post double crochet, like the pair before, I guess the pair, two pairs before that. 
and we'll join it up. So yarn over, I'm going to go behind the post, yarn over, pull through the post, and then just yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two, and my stitch is done. We're going to skip the chain, which is this guy right here, and we're going to go to the first stitch of the row. So skip these, go to this stitch. So it's right below the first post. So skip chain, first post, and we're going to slip stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull that out of the stitch, and pull the first loop, that one, through the second loop, that one. Slip stitch, and we are done. So start the row with a chain two. Now this is the row we're going to repeat over and over again. So these are front posts, and you're going to invert all of the posts. So if it's a front post, you're going to turn it into a back post. A back post, like these, become front posts. So what we're going to be doing, oh, I should show you. If you can't tell what a back post is, if you see this thing in the front, that means it's a back post. These guys don't have that, so that's a front post. So we're going to work on the top part of the post. See, it kind of is divided into two. So we're going to work up here. Remember to work in the post and not the stitch. So down here, and it's the same with these. You just can't see it. See, they're on the other side. But you're going to be doing the same. And skip the little bottom part. We're not going to touch the bottom part. So let me get my yarn back on my hook, and we can get started. So these two are front posts. So now we have to turn them into back post double crochets. So come in in front of the post and you're going to push the post backward. Like so. Just yarn over and pull your hook back out of the stitch. And you're going to yarn over, pull through two loops and yarn over, pull through two loops. And that is a back post double crochet. So this next one, we're going to do the same. So we'll make a back post double crochet. There we go. Now we've got our three loops, so yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. These guys right here are back posts, as you can see. We have to pull them forward, so we have, we have to make them front post double crochets. So go in behind the post and pull it forward. Now you just yarn over, remove your hook, and you finish your stitch by yarning over, pull two, yarn over, pull two. All right, the post next to it's got to be matching, so we will also turn that into a front post double crochet. So I'll work a front post here. There we go. The next one, see that they're forward, they're front posts? So we have to turn them into back post double crochets. So we got to pull them back, so insert your hook in front of the stitch, pull your post back, and finish your double crochet. There we go. And there's that one. The next one's the same, so we're going to also make it a back post double crochet. There we go. Now I'll just close my double crochet. These next ones, they're back posts, so we have to pull them forward. So we're going to turn those into front post double crochets. So I'll make my first front post double crochet. And I'll start to speed these up. Um, so if you need to see the slow down version, go back to the beginning of the previous row. So just continue alternating between front post and back post double crochets. So these guys, they're in the front, so you're going to want to pull them back. Let me grab my hook. There we go. So these are going to become back post double crochets. These ones are going to be front post. These next ones have to be pushed back, so they become back post and so forth until you finish the row. So we'll get back to this side. Don't worry about this part at the bottom. We're going to sew it closed in a while. And just work your way around. I will see you when we get there. All right, I made it. I made it all the way around. This open part, don't worry, we will sew it shut at the end. And that's because this is going to be the top part of the beanie. So we're on the last one. This long kind of diagonal looking point, or stitch, not point, sorry, stitch, 
is actually a front post double crochet. It only looks kind of long, but it's really the same size as all the others. So I'm going to work this as a back post double crochet because like I said, it is a front post. So we have to pull that back. So here's my back post double crochet. And now I just have to close my double crochet. And we are done with a row. So to close the round, we're gonna do the same thing we did the last row. So we skip the chain. So you're always gonna skip the little chain. And you're gonna go into the first stitch. So this guy right here. And you're gonna slip stitch. So in this one, you insert your hook, yarn over, and you get your first loop through your second loop, and you're done. So this is the row we're gonna repeat over and over and over again. So like the last row, we start with a chain two. And as you can see in this row, our first two stitches are now back post double crochets because we inverted the posts. So now we have to turn these into front post double crochets again. So these have to become back post double crochets. So we're just gonna keep working the same. So just yarn over and make a front post double crochet. There we go. And we close our double crochet. So we make our second one. So here's the post. As you can see, it's a back post. So we got to turn it into a front post a double crochet. And there we go. The next two stitches are front posts. So we'll turn them into a back post double crochet. And make sure you get behind the post and not into the stitch. So here's the other one. So now we have a matching pair. This next one is a back post. So we will turn it into a front post double crochet. So as you can see, it's the same thing that we did in the previous row. We just were reversing the stitches. So keep working this way uh, for the rest of the pattern. This is the same thing you're gonna do over and over and over again. I'll show you how to uh, complete the round here in just a few moments. That way, if anyone still needs to see how to do it, I'll show you one more time. And then I'm gonna show you how to switch colors. And you can switch colors as many times as you want. I'll just show you once how to switch colors. And see, here's our pattern. You just can't see it as well with a white. But I'll show you how to switch colors and you can do that. All right, so I'm at the end here. I've got two front posts. So I'll finish working these as back post double crochets. So I'll try to get through these a little more quickly. All right, and our very last post of the row is a back post. So I have to turn that into a front post. See, it's hiding back here. And the beauty of finishing with one stitch is that you will always remember. And if you suddenly finish with a pair, you know that you skipped a stitch. So try not to skip any stitches. Uh, it will ruin the basket weave look and it'll make your hat smaller. All right, so we skip the chain like we have uh, in all the previous rows, and then we just make a slip stitch in the first stitch of the row. And there you go. So there's another row finished. And now to switch colors, I'm just gonna grab this screen and show you how to switch here. And you do this every time you switch colors. Um, remember that when you switch colors, you're gonna be left with two tails to weave in. So if you don't like to weave in ends, try not to switch colors too much because you have to weave in all the ends. That's probably my least favorite part. All right, so leave a nice long tail and just wrap it around your hook. So I just pull that loop through the loop that I already had on my hook. And then you just have to pull everything to tighten it up. And there we go. So we our chain two that we make at the beginning of the row, the first chain, you use both threads of your yarn. Now for the second chain, just use the working yarn. So the one that's attached to your skein. So just make your last chain with one thread of yarn, like so, and you have switched colors. So just tighten everything up and we're gonna work everything exactly the same as we have for the past few rows. So these front post double crochets, we're gonna work them as back post double crochets. All right, so I just have to close my stitch. Now I'll go to the post next to that and turn that into a back post double crochet as well.
Nope, let's try again. There we go. And I will just close my double crochet. So there's our first pair. The second one, they are back posts. So we have to turn them into front post double crochets. So I'll do this. There we go. So there's one front post double crochet. And then there is, as soon as I get more yarn, my second front post double crochet. So I've got my three loops and just yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And the next two stitches are front posts, so I have to make them back post double crochets. Go. And the next one's also a back post double crochet. And that's it. So as you can tell, you just keep working the same stitch that we had been working in the previous rows. So just reverse your stitching or in, I guess is it, is it inverted or reverse it? I think you would invert them. Anyway, so your back post front po uh, your back posts, there we go. Become front post, your front post become back post and you will have this beautiful basket weave stitch. Um, switch colors as many times as you want. Remember you will have to weave in two ends per color that you switch. So if you don't like to weave ends, don't do don't switch colors too many times. So I thought I'd show you one last time how to finish the row. So here's my last front post. So I'm just gonna finish it as a back post. Here we go. Do this one quickly. And here we go. So you skip the chain, which is this guy. Go to the first stitch, which is this guy. Insert your hook in here and make a slip stitch. And we are done with this row. So keep working these patterns uh, as tall as you want your hat to be. We are gonna add a brim. Normally my, the brims I like to add are about two inches at least. You can add a brim as tall or as wide as, as you want. So I'll make a few more rows and then I'll show you how to make the brim and how to close up your hat. All right, so here is my work. I made a couple of inches worth. This side is the top because it doesn't stretch so much. So this is where our initial chain was and we're gonna sew that part together. So it doesn't stretch as much as this bottom part that's got a lot more stretch. And this is because we're not limited by the chain, the initial chain, we're just limited by the stretchiness of the stitch. So that's why we're gonna make the brim over on the other side, over where the green's at. So this hat is about four-ish and a half inches tall. It is for a newborn. If you wanna make a different hat size, look in the description below, I have average hat sizes um, just written down. So I'm just going to switch colors. I don't have a whole lot of yarn left because these are all my scraps um, from the scarf. So I really don't have a lot of yarn left. So we're gonna switch colors again and I'll just get closer here. So I'll leave a nice long tail of white, wrap the yarn into my hook like so, and then pull the hook through the loop I have on it already. So this green one, I'll pull the white one through the green one and there we go. So I've switched colors. Now I have to start with a chain two. So grab both of your threads and make your first chain and then use your working thread to make the last remaining chain. And that will be our chain two to begin our row. And this next row is gonna be worked in all double crochets. So for those that are experienced, make a double crochet in every stitch of the row, not every post, but every stitch. So for those that are not quite as experienced or are not sure what I mean, I will show you. So we've been working in the posts in all of our previous rows and we're gonna work on the stitches. So these guys are the posts, here are our stitches. So we're going to work into the stitches. So every one of our next stitches for this row and this row only, we're gonna work into the stitch. So for the double crochet, a quick refresh, you are going to yarn over and then you're going to insert your hook into this first first stitch. If you skip this stitch, you're gonna have a little hole in your brim. So just work it into this very first stitch, yarn over, pull your hook out. You're gonna have your three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And there's our first double crochet. 
in the stitch right next to that we're going to do the same so yarn over we're going to insert our hook yarn over pull the hook out we've got three loops so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two that is a double crochet and we need to make one double crochet in every one of the stitches all the way around and I will see you when I get there so I've got my last stitch this big guy and I have to make my last double crochet so I will yarn over insert the hook and let's finish this one quickly we're gonna skip all of this stuff and go to the very first stitch of the row so skip your little chain and go over here that tiny little stitch next to that big one that green one that was left is where you switched yarn so you'll have a very hard time stitching into that if you try all right so we chain two and this is a row we're gonna start repeating here so we're gonna set our set the pattern for the brim we have to make the first stitch is a front post double crochet so we're back to front and back post all right so here's our first one our second one is going to be a back post double crochet so let me finish this one and i will explain what's going to happen here so you see how down here we worked in pairs these guys are by themselves down here we worked in pairs so it's two posts for front post two posts for back post up here we're just going to do the one and that's going to create a ribbed look um, so a lot of people like the ribbed brims that's how I make my rib brims I like them they're really stretchy and they're really easy and quick to make so the next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet all right and move on to the one after that and it's going to be a back post double crochet so we all we are alternating front and back posts every stitch so this one is a back post all right and the next one is a front post and the next one is a back post so you can kind of see what's happening here so we have a front post a back post front post a back post and we're going to continue working this way until we make it all the way around our hat and this is the foundation for our brim and we are going to be ex uh, we're going to be extending that in the next few rows. So I'm here at the end. I'll just finish my last stitch and finish my round. So I'll close that up as well. So remember to skip your chain, go into the first stitch of the row and slip stitch. So for the brim, we're going to extend the stitches that we just did. So if you made a front post double crochet in the previous row, you're going to crochet a front post double crochet in this next row. And that's just going to extend uh, the stitch so that it looks like ribbing. All right, so we start with our chain two like we normally do. This first one is a front post. So here, remember that we were alternating every other row. So if it was a front post, it became a back post. Not so here. We're going to continue the stitch that we started. So this is a front post. So we're going to crochet a front post. So I will make my front post double crochet here. This next stitch is a back post double crochet. So I'm going to stitch it as a back post double crochet. And there we go. And I'll close up my stitch. The one after that is a front post, as you can see. So we're going to stitch it as a front post double crochet. This one is a back post, so we're going to work it as a back post double crochet. And I think you kind of get the idea now. So for the rest of the rows of your brim, just keep working them in the same way. So if it's a front post, work a front post. If it's a back post, work the back post so that these will get nice and long and you'll be able to see the ribbing, ribbing very clearly. Uh, I do try to make about a minimum of about a two inch brim usually. I don't know if I'll have enough yarn for this one. I've got very little left and I don't have enough of these colors to go all the way around. So I'm not sure how wide this is gonna be, but normally I go for a two inch brim minimum and then I just close up the stitch or close up the hat, sorry. So I worked as many rows as I could and 
this is what your brim will look like. It's a lot nicer when you can make it a lot thicker, but or a lot wider, sorry. But as you can see, it is nice and stretchy and it's warm. So we're just going to stop here because I don't have enough yarn to go around one more time. So I'll leave a nice long tail, which I will show you how to weave in here in just a second. So just remove your hook and pull the yarn along with it. There we go. Give that a little tug and tighten up the little knot at the bottom. Now just get your yarn or tapestry needle and get, uh, get that threaded. All right, and we're ready to go. So I'm just going to stitch in here. Normally I make a little knot, but I just didn't feel like it right now. So if you wanna make a knot, go ahead and make a knot. And start weaving in your ends. I normally go, I sew in a bit of a square shape. You can sew however you want, but I'm just going to stitch all the way down and just do a couple, well, I guess it's a couple rows long. So give it a nice long stitch. And then I'm gonna give it a stitch in a different direction. And then I will stitch in a different direction until I have a bit of a square shape. So there we go. I'm going to switch directions. And what this will do is if you, the more you switch directions, it'll make it less likely that when you wash your hat, like if you were to wash this in the washing machine, that the thread will come out and unravel your hat. So if you've made a little knot and then you weave in your ends, you're good, you're perfect. You'll be able to, unless your yarn says otherwise, you should be able to machine wash your work just fine and it won't unravel. But be sure you do check the um, care instructions for the yarn that you purchased. So, cause this is a cotton, I know it might shrink a little bit, but it is machine washable and dryable. So at least this one is. All right, so this tiny little tail end is too little to weave in, so I'm just going to cut it. So I'll give it a little tug, I'll cut it off, and then I'll just give a little tug on my hat, and I've hidden the little end. So I'm going to do the same with all of these guys, but I will do it uh, once I'm off camera because I don't have a lot of daylight left. So I gotta get this finished. So we're just gonna go up and start working on the top part of the hat. So normally I would weave in all my, all my ends first and then flip the hat inside out and do this on the inside of the hat. Um, I'll do that halfway through. So the last few stitches, I'll, I'll flip my hat inside out. But if I do it now, you'll be able to see all the, all the ends that I didn't weave in and it might make it a little more confusing. So just uh, start by threading your needle, tapestry needle, a yarn needle, whatever you wanna use. There we go. Hopefully I did it this time. Yeah, I did. And then give yourself a nice long piece of yarn. I don't know, maybe about six inches or so. You just wanna be able to have a nice long piece that you can sew and secure the top part of your hat. So if you left a long tail of yarn at this part right here, at the beginning of the hat, see how this is open? Right here. You can just tie these two ends together, so the end of your thread and then the end of this one, and you're ready to go. I didn't leave a long enough one, so I am just going to insert my needle into any of the stitches. It doesn't matter what stitch you choose. Just stitch, choose a stitch, insert your needle, and you're gonna make a little knot at the end of the yarn. So make sure that it's a nice and tight knot. So I'm just gonna double knot it just to be sure. There we go, that's not gonna come undone. And let's start sewing. So we're gonna sew in and out every couple of stitches. I don't do every stitch because then it's a little too tight and it's kind of hard to pull on the yarn when you're done. So when you pull on the yarn, the goal is to have the top part of the hat close shut and then you just have to, you just have to sew it shut at the top uh, to secure it that way. So I just do every couple of stitches. So normally I'll just do every two or three stitches. I'll sew behind them. So I'll go in and out. There we go. So see when I pull on this, it starts to close the top part of the hat. So I'm going to keep making a few more stitches, work my way all the way around, and then I'll show you how to knot the top part of your hat. All right, so we're here, made it all the way. There we go. And now we just have to pull on the yarn. So I get this through, there we go. And now give it a nice and tight pull and close the top part of your hat, like so. 
There you go. So as you can see, it's still a little open at the top and that's okay. We're gonna go through and sew it or give it a few more stitches to close it up. I'm gonna flip this inside out so that I can hide the bottom knot. Um, you should already be working inside out. If you're not, just kind of flip it over. So I'll pass my needle here and do that. If you're gonna do this kind of thing, I rep recommend a tapestry needle so you don't poke your finger. Or, you know, your yarn needle should be fine too. But if you're using regular needle and thread, you might poke your finger. All right, so give it a nice tight pull on your thread and then hold the top part really firmly and close it shut. So you're gonna stitch over the top. So you're gonna stitch one stitch over the other, over the other, like that. And then I'm going to pull my needle up over the stitch I just made and then go in the same direction that I just worked in. So instead of going in in one direction and then out the other direction and then just kind of weaving my stitches, I'm just going in the same direction and working kind of clock in like in a circular motion, so kind of clockwise. So I'm just gonna do a stitch all the way around until I work back to the spot where I started. And that's so that I can make sure I stitch every side of the beanie closed. And if there's a little space left at the top, I'll make sure that it's closed after giving it so many stitches, just one over the other, it'll close the top part just a little bit more in case I don't wanna use a pom-pom. So I'll pull out a pom-pom so that you can see what it looks like here in a minute. But if you don't wanna put a pom-pom on it, if you just stitch it this way, it just helps make sure that your beanie is completely closed at the top. So I'll give this a few more stitches. If you don't have a pom-pom, but you want one, I do have two video tutorials for that. I have one that I make out of yarn and one that I make out of faux fur. So if you're intimidated by the faux fur pom-poms, they're incredibly easy to make and they're surprisingly inexpensive. So I do have a tutorial for that. I will put the suggestions, just the little uh, info cards up at the top. So just keep an eye out for those. I'll put them up here in just a second. So for the faux fur pom-pom and for the yarn pom-pom. So that way you can make your own pom and add it to your hat. There we go. So make sure that this is all knotted up. So I just got, there we go. Make sure that this is all tight. And I still have a bit of thread left. I don't wanna have to weave all of that in. So I'm gonna move my needle closer to my project, like so, and leave a nice short tail to weave in. But I'll weave this on uh, off camera so you don't have to be bored watching me do it. I'll just hide my needle in here, turn my work right side out, and you are done. So that's it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them down in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe. I post videos every Thursday, and I try to make fun and exciting different projects for you to work on every week. Hit the like button. I love it when you do. It makes me feel super special. Follow me on Instagram, and be sure to tag your work with at mode.bespoke or hashtag modebespoke. That way I can see your work and everybody in our lovely crochet community can see them too. The written pattern for this hat is available on my blog. The description is in, or the, the link, sorry, is in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I guess I will see you next Thursday.